Now we've all seen this classic Y2K effect of using the threshold. I like to do mine a bit different. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to get this secret Y2K effect that I use for most of my projects and client projects. So let's get straight into it. The image I'll be using is by Stowe Kelly on Unsplash. I want you to go ahead and select and cut out your image. For me personally, I'm just gonna be using the magic wand tool and then going up to select subject and then just cleaning it up by pressing Q and getting a black brush and removing any imperfections or adding anything that the mask wasn't able to generate within its selection. Go ahead and press Q to get out of that and head down to the little mask tool at the bottom where all the adjustment and effects are and you can go ahead and make a mask of your image. I want you to go ahead and select the adjustments panel, add in a black and white, and then convert these two into a smart object. Head back down into adjustments and add in a gradient map. From here, you basically wanna adjust your gradient map to attack three main key points. You got your shadows, midtones, and then your highlights. So for your shadows, you want it to be solid black. So just drag that slider up a little bit and then add in a new highlight. Make this white and then drag that down a bit and then go ahead and add in a midtone. Now the midtone is gonna be whatever color you want. I like to select blue because it's the closest to a bright white and it allows you to get this sort of gradient effect that's a little bit softer than the harsh looking effects that you see all the times when you're using gradients. So just making like a little baby blue to add those midtones mid -tones back into the design and repeat that to add in another shadow to outline the design. Uh, step one to the Krabby Patty formula to get this effect. Press OK once you've selected your gradient map and you like it how it's looking. Then head back onto your image, go to filter, and then head down to filter gallery. And from here, we're gonna be selecting the halftone filter to add this sort of halftone screen print or digital print effect. And make sure it's selected to one or two. You can't really do 1.5, I tried, but two, is fine for this image because of how large it is. If you're working with a smaller image, make sure you select it to one. And then make sure you press your gradient map and it is a clipping mask because we are gonna add in a threshold to just see how our design is looking. Now this is already looking more unique than 80% of these threshold designs that I see because we've added those textures and effects into the design rather than just a threshold. From here, go to filter, add noise and add a bit of noise. I like it to be around four to seven especially when I'm working with images that are this size because you don't want the noise to, I guess, blend all your hard work in. You just want it to add more texture to the design to make it look like bad print. And now this is gonna be the basis for our whole design. Next, go into Illustrator, add in a new Illustrator document and just type in your brand name. I'm just gonna be using this as a shell to draw over the top on with Photoshop, but just to make sure that we're getting all the placements of the letter right, this is how to make sure that I get those right the first time. Once you've got your type, just head back into the Photoshop document and Command-C, Command-V the type into Photoshop. Just place it where you want it and you're basically gonna wanna turn off all the layers, grab a brush that has some sort of pressure sensitivity. I'm using a drawing tablet to make sure I get this effect of hand-drawn swivelly type looking right and just go ham and just make a sort of custom typeface. Don't take yourself too seriously when you're tracing this type to make your own custom typeface. Make it nice and flowy and resemble a sort of smoke effect and make sure that you have fun because making custom type is literally soul draining, but I like to enjoy it somehow because it makes your design just stand out a bit more rather than just using a classic free font from Defont or whatever font website that you guys use. But once you get to the stage of this trace or outline of how you want it, just grab a fill bucket and just fill in all your type using that fill bucket by pressing G on your computer or just heading over to the fill bucket tool to the left where all your tools are. From here, make any adjustments that you need to on the effect itself. Finally, to add that sort of grunge element, you're gonna wanna add in a displacement map. 
a displacement map is another Photoshop file that you need to create of just a grunge effect and basically save that image into a photo and just call it maps. And then from here, a displacement map is a grayscale black and white copy of the image. And by simplifying the image's colors, highlights and shadows into shades of gray, you can add that displacement map effect onto your actual typeface and it will conform to all the peaks of highs and midtones, making it look sort of torn, ripped or even I guess blurry depending on what your displacement map looks like after you got your displacement map perfect i have a bunch of them just by going on unsplash and selecting a bunch of textures and grabbing displacement maps and saving them as psds next you're going to head over into blending options for your typography Basically, you want to select inner glow and color overlay. These are the shadows and effects for inner glow that I use just to get that sort of, I guess, smoky look to my image or typeface. From here, you can make any adjustments that best suit you. But for me personally, this is almost always perfect. And I've used this on a bunch of projects. Add in the threshold to see how the typeface is looking. And this is a lot better than most designs that I see already because we've added those elements that make the design stand out. You can always try to add in any filters and adjustments to make sure it suits the sort of look that we went with with our image, but that's really not needed. Next, just turn on your image and you can start playing with placements to get it how you want it. See if anything's missing, see if you need to add anything, any colors that you want to add. You can't really add colors if you're adding thresholds until you get to the final point. But yeah, you get what I mean. Just play with it, make sure it looks nice. For me personally, the way I closed off the design was just by warping the typeface so we could have a circular focal point rather than a rectangular one, just so we're looking directly in the middle rather than across and then the middle. If you get what I mean, you understand design language. If not, just go look at the fundamentals of design language. Drop down the element of the girl so we can see the typeface a bit more and have a billboard of our brand on the back of people. And that's pretty much it. But for me personally, I'm going to add in this sort of billboard or motel signage just to add a sort of story to our design, because right now she's just sitting in space and this is going to create a sort of element like she's stranded or something like that. And I just like having my designs looking a bit more full because they look a bit more complete. It wouldn't be a complete design without a logo. So go ahead and head back into Illustrator, add in a sort of typeface that's looking blocky, or you can add in what sort of whatever typeface that you want. Create outline, get the rotation tool and select a center point and press Command D. Make sure the rotation tool or center point isn't too far away because you want these conjoining or touching each other. From here, you want to select all of them and make sure you grab a duplicate by holding option and dragging upwards, go into Pathfinder and grab the original one and make them into one object. From here, you have a logo or typeface. Now, I want this to be gallery department-esque, so I'm going to add in a revision department within that, same, within that same typeface and then just add in the logo within that. And that's going to make this design complete. From here, I just like to drag in the logo and just place it on top and select the color that resembles gallery department. Gallery department tends to use very like weird colors like green and red together, which resembles Christmas, but it works for them because their designs are always under construction. And that's the whole look or feel that they go with regarding their whole design aesthetic. And I enjoy it. It's really well thought out and it was an inspiration for my personal brand revision. Once you got your color right, select your artboard and add it into your libraries or export it as a PNG, but make sure your artboard is using a transparent background and it's not selected onto white. From here, you just want to select whatever mockups that you use. I like to use my own personally designed by Will Pro Technical Pack because it's so easy to use, or you can just use the classic one, which I sent an update to everyone. If you haven't checked it out, make sure you go download that update. I'm going to select the flare pants and also the t-shirt for this and just drag it into to our Photoshop document, our Illustrator document, sorry. Now that we got our design elements nice and complete, we can go ahead and add in any sort of colors that we want, any sort of effects that we want. Since I'm going with that very heavy gallery department-esque design aesthetic, I'm just gonna be following that design direction regarding patches and also just very simple typeface on the front of the design and selecting colors like cream rather than white because all their garments tend to be distressed or heavily washed vintage-esque. And that's gonna close it off for this really quick and easy Y2K 
sort of gallery department aesthetic. Now, is it really Y2K? Well, Y2K is whatever you want it to be. It just has to be within that 2000s era and sort of reference. I don't know why people keep saying I can't design Y2K. Leave me alone. Anyway, I love you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Make sure to go check out Revision because we just dropped. Love you.